it's now exactly one year since I first bought this plant that I place in the succulent arrangement here. And look how beautiful they have grown. They have weathered the frost and rain that we had this winter. A few days ago, there's a comment under one of my videos asking if I could do a video of my top 10 favorite succulents. Now this one is, oh look how gorgeous this pink bluebird. So this is a Echeveria bluebird that has gone pink. And this one here is wax. I avoid this wax that, look at that, something, an ant is living in there. So there's probably an ant colony growing in there. But look how beautiful they are under the skies of the first day of spring here in Australia. We still had minus one this morning. And also, by the way, this video is vlog number 201, a continuation of my succulents and coffee, oops, vlog. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do succulents and coffee vlog anymore. We're just gonna do some vlog videos and I'm numbering it so that way I can, or we can keep track of what we have. Anyway, this is purple card cluster. Oh my goodness, you are so beautiful. Gorgeous, look at that. I don't really have a top 10 because there are so many succulents that I'm even having a hard time keeping track of them. So what I'm going to be doing instead is the best succulents to grow are the ones that have survived our weather here in Canberra, Australia, which is a zone 9 on the hardiness growing zone. This, look how gorgeous that is. There's only a few of them and what I want to do with this one, look, even the ones that are growing has already gone red. So it has something to do with the soil and look at that. Isn't that cute? So what I'd like to do is propagate this or grow from that one. Look how nice that is. It's like little grapes. It's gorgeous. And this one is frostbite or Sedevaria Francesco Baldi or Graptosedum Francesco Baldi. And look how beautiful they look. I'm just going inspecting all my plants that have survived the winter frost. And look at this beautiful arrangement. It needs to be really separated because they have outgrown their pots. Finally, my Vashon is starting to color up. This is my oldest Vashon, which was sold to me as a Vashon, but I haven't seen it colored up. And this is the first year after six years that is showing slight coloration and also it's flowering. So which means if I want to gather some seeds from that one, I can do so because there's three heads are better than one. <laughs> so plenty of possible seed pods. All around me is just succulents. I really have to do a garden makeover and overhaul my garden because this is just not right. I have so many plants that... <gasps> okay, hello, I'm gonna go to you. Okay, I can't access you. I have to go over on the other side. Look at this and the opaline up the top distracted me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, this one is so beautiful. Look how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness. Oh, the little pockmarks on the leaves. That was from the hail that we got uh, a few months ago. Well, it's a couple of months ago, winter, isn't it? That's a winter hailstorm. And I'm trying to compare it with this, I think, Hyalina, that one. And this one is my sweet violet, or which I call sweet violet. And this one is no name. What's your name? What's your name? Do you have a label somewhere? I lost. No, this one is actually, I bought this from Suckers for Succulents, I think. And this was a freebie. And look how beautiful it is now. So this would be about... I think at least eight months old, or yeah, February. What is it now? I don't even know. Okay, I put you back there. So six months ago, it was already a big plant, but not that big. So it's doubled its size, but look how beautiful that is. In my little room here inside, this is my grow tent, which I'm growing. Look, this pepino is now flowering. We still had minus one this morning. So I can't take this out because this is going to survive the frost, but I don't want the flowers, which is going to be fruit, to be damaged. And also, I've got my seropeja or string of hearts, variegated. Look at this, that beautiful, growing inside here, which also, I will take this out. Uh, not today or not September because we might still have a chance of getting heavy frost that's gonna knock it about and I don't want that to happen. So anyway baby P, hello. I need to see what this budgie is doing. Hi baby bird. Hello cutie bird. How is a baby pee pee? 
Who's that cute little bird there? Okay. Hey. Hey, you're a bit fussy over there, Pedro. Look, look at you. Huh? Mommy's got her lumberjack shirt. Hey. Okay. We go back to our tent now, baby bird. Behind my tent is my mess. I just finished potting up last night or I bought some more succulents and I potted them up and this one I actually have to remove this Ben Buddies very very hardy plant so another plant you should get it can survive I call them Armageddon plants so I need to transfer this to a bigger pot and that's why I took it out and you can see that it was very very dry and that's why it is growing very very small but cute now oh cute the minute I say cute Pedro just gave me a kiss so there's still, hang on, I'm just going to go back to the titling of my vlog. We're just going to call this vlog number whatever, isn't it, baby P? But it's still the same uh, bits and pieces of here and there topics. But anyway, so it can go on forever or it can be short. But normally vlog is me just um, chattering about talking to you about succulents. But talk about succulents is a <laughs> It's a different vlog as well, isn't it, baby P? That's going to be spe specific to, let's talk about Portulaca Gillesii hook. Okay. Now, baby P. If I whistle to him, you like that? Hey, hey, say hello. Hello, beautiful boy. Hey, who's a cutie bird? Who's a cutie bird? Who's a cutie bird? That's how I talk to Pedro and he gets so excited. Now he's just listening to me. Okay, now it's first day of spring, but we still have forecasts, frost for the next few days. I think Sunday we'll have minus one and Saturday will still be cold. And today is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Yes, but we have an appointment to the doctor this uh, in an hour's time. So I have to be quick. Actually, I forgot about that. Now, these have been all growing. All these variegated plants have been all growing in here for the last three months because of winter. Pedro just scaling up and down my arms. Anyway, so these, most of them are expensive plants. That's going to be painful if they die on me, but I need to take them out. So this one, Solisense, is now uh, flowering. I actually cross-pollinated that and hopefully I can get some seeds and I can grow some more um, Solisense from it. Although this one, is two years old from me. Yes, this original plant is two years old. And look how many babies. Are. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, look, yes. So this is a natural variegation. Uh, this looks like a fake variegation, but that's just the nature of the plant. It will variegate in the center and also outside, as you can see. See when they're growing new and some don't. But it will form a variegation in the center there and then as it grows out or gets older it will go green which gives it that beautiful yellow and green look about it so in a big pot or once they grow or grow more then it would be a beautiful plant to have and it's also frost hardy but this one I kept it here mainly for the reason that I wanted to grow and put out some babies and winter is the best time to do that because most of the succulents okay if someone asks what is the dormancy of a budgie <laughs> I'm going to say, if kept in the right temperature, they don't go dormant at all. In it, baby P, you don't go dormant. You awake all the time. So last night, what time did you go to bed, Pedro? Okay, you went to bed at 12.25. Naughty bird. And, okay, so I think I need to remove a lot of the stuff here. Okay, but before I do that, this one is flowering. And I remember at the end of autumn, I went around my garden and I found one. One plant like this. Yes, I did. And then I started growing it because I remembered I really love the flower of the look of this. In This is purple rice, it's called. This whole plant look is starting to look red. So in summer, if we do get, uh, if you water, they like a lot of water and also, oh, look how beautiful that is there, the purple look. So they like a lot of water and a lot of sun. So you can actually water them every day, just about. As long as it's a free draining soil, it's not a clay soil, they, they grow like weeds. So anyway, I'm just going to take, and also that one too. So that one as well, I only started with a small um, 
bit of cutting and look at it now. Anyway, Calicia Rosato, something like that, I think. I can't remember all the names, really. I just have a vague as just Pink Lady. So this one, Pink Lady, is not winter hardy. It will die from the frost, so it needs to be kept indoors. So a lot of these plants, if I could have it my way, I would be growing them in a temperature between 10 degrees to 25 degrees. And that is the perfect temperature for a lot of these succulents not to go dormant and in here I've been experimenting being uh, in a tent it's enclosed so you can see the roof so I didn't even provide ventilation for them although I do have a fan growing in here look at that so all the fungus nuts are actually uh, dying <laughs> look at that on top of the fan here but I have paper to trap them and look how many fungus nuts uh, there is and I change it like once a month and they seem to be getting less and less there's a what's that acronym KISS K-I-S-S -S. keep it simple do we say stupid or stupid Pedro? Yeah stupid stupid uh, stupid budgie okay he's still on my shoulder but anyway this is my methyl solution one cup of methyl and a quarter cup of water so I have found that this is best for you really want to look at him oh he doesn't know where to go hey baby P come here come come so I have been doing some experimenting this year inside this grow tent since there's no ventilation mold and fungus is bound to grow like you can see those white fluffy bits on this I don't know this is carnival or Etna that is growing on it I tried using my rose gun spray they do work but you have to keep applying them and I find that my methyl solution is still the best for them look at you crawling down okay baby Pete now mommy's gonna spray this because they are the most effective method of getting rid of fungus or at least suppressing them now this one is carnival and look at that one it's Etna as well I think they're all just changing all the names and whatever but anyway so that one is another fungus there that white fluffy bit and uh, other people would suggest getting rid of the plant and I am not getting rid of thousands of my plants and that one has been sprayed with a rose gun and you can see it's starting to flare up again. So I'm gonna spray that with my methyl. It's just simple, just, I don't add anything to it. It's just methyl or methylated spirit or denatured alcohol uh, in the States, in other countries, that's what it's called. Anyway, and a quarter water, and that's, that's the trick. So it doesn't work on aphids. The rose gun is actually good for aphids and also probably budgie. <laughs> Pedro, can I just stop this so mommy can, Hang on, I'm gonna put Pedro <laughs> so I can, so we can talk more because I can't concentrate. So I've got a husband making noise, I got a budgie on my shoulder, and it's really, really hard to work, isn't it, baby P? Hang on, now we can talk better. Uh, so this is my, okay, the yellow one is that soapy water. This is actually rose gun uh, for spray fungus and insect spray, it says, but anyway, so. This one now, this Edna here, I'm not going to spray it, but I'll leave it for now because I'm doing this video and these are not frost hardy plants and that's the reason why they're here. Even these manods, I have to bring it inside because so many times now, a few, a few years ago, <laughs> every year since a few years ago, uh, I haven't done video for a while, that's why my brain, oh look! Okay, my brain is already jumping. There's a star. Look at the leaf in the center there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But anyway, it's like one of those paper balloons. Anywho, this one has survived the winter because it's here. And also, this is the variegated diamond state. It's not red anymore, but it has grown much bigger. And in the center there, that's a sign of fungus nuts. So when the roots get eaten by fungus nuts or some fungus nuts living in it, that's what happens. But it will grow out of it. So especially if I take that outside and maybe give it a repot as well because the pot that is growing in is already too small. So here is my oldest Echeveria manodes that has actually var variegated. Now it's lost its variegation and you can see that on the tip there, look at that. I actually harvested some of this but I forgot to put them up. Hang on, let me just see. Ah, there they are. So I took some cuttings a few weeks ago and look at the roots coming out of it. So this is ready to be planted and also I was cleaning up my shichikuksi 
look at this and they're starting to grow roots new roots coming out of there see so it's just been sitting here and empty pots because uh, i removed the older plants that has grown and has survived the winter and i put them in a big pot this is my pot of black achevria so anything that's from the bloody maria or blood maria here in the center now these are all blood maria hybrids that I actually put in this big pot. On the next video or next future videos, I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on or what plants I put in there. But for now, my Compton carousel is now dead. That plant cost me $105. <laughs> I think there was five heads or something, but then now it's gone. Even here inside, I don't like it. And then that one is, what is your name? I forgot, variegated. It's just so beautiful, the variegation. So now she's ready to be taken outside. That one is Loella, variegated. So this one used to be all white, those two. This one here and that one. See those coloring there? I'll show you a photo of what it looks like before. Purple Delight, variegated, okay? But it's not really a variegated one. I believe this is a Purple Delight that was covered up to make it go uh, yellow or variegated. So it's all white and I thought it's gonna die. And then I paid the money just to see <laughs> what would happen. So they will grow back into normal one. So anyway, Anyway, this one now, my purple delight over here, or ghost variegate. Oh, purple delight is this one. Yes, so that is the variegated purple delight. Look how beautiful it is. And by the way, I have removed some leaves and propagated it. And look, I've got two heads. So one, two, but it looks like they're just going to be normal one. They're not going to variegate. So to be able to get a variegated plant out of this, I need to chop its head off. So which is what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to do that on this video. I'm going to do that on the next video somewhere, sometime. Anyway, this one, I bought two of them. This is Mungadnes variegated. And it came with two plants. So one closer to the light is all nice. Look at the color. The one on the right closer to the light is prettier than the one on the left. That is way down lower, about 10 inches below. Uh, way further or farther from the light. My cubic frost, which is very frost hardy, is not growing at all. And it's going to stop growing during winter as well. So I decided to bring it inside here to make it grow faster. And it has grown faster, but it also got attacked by fungus gnats. But it is going to recover as I can see the center is sort of clearing up. So this is a Chiviria Citruensis, which is the only one I've got. And I really want it to grow fast. So I put them all in here. Also, the Berkeley light over here variegated. You can see all that dry leaves, but at least it has survived winter in here. But anyway, uh, so many plants here. Rognoni I variegated. The, um, I think this is elk sole crested. Look, I see the fungus in the center there, but that's not a problem. And then the crested one has died, but there's still a couple of plants. I don't know if it's gonna come back or not, but anyway, these are expensive plants. And now, uh, I have learned my lesson and after almost a thousand Echeveria, <laughs> I have now decided I am slowly going to ease off in buying succulents now and I'm just going to focus on something that is really unusual and rare. Say for example, the Citruensis. I've been after this for a long time. So any plant that I believe is sort of weird and wonderful like even this <laughs> euphobia here that's all i'm gonna buy i'm just gonna slow down on buying a chivaria because i can now make my own hybrids as well so if i want something i can just easily say okay I'm, if i cross this with that i'm gonna end up with this anyway guys that's all i've got for this video oh yes also oh my goodness i'm sorry i need to water you this is my atlantis sedum oh look how big it is now oh my goodness and that is quite soft oh look at you beautiful look how big you are I need to chop that off and so I can grow some more and also soak that in water now also oops is that Hanakaida as well there yes I got two Hanakaida do I anyway is that Fimbriata I don't know I have to go look at the label anyway guys that's all I got for this video and hopefully I'll see you on the next video anyway uh, it's Oh my God, my back's killing me. 
Now I have to get ready to go and do, what am I going to do? Take hubby <laughs> to the doctor. Okay. Oh, dead. What are you? Crested Luella, I think, but doesn't matter. Now this one is lemon variegated, lemon rose, and it's flowering. I've already cross-pollinated that, so hopefully I'll get to get some seeds from that. And speaking of seeds, these are my seed-grown Anacamceros Sunrise. Look at them. They're just beautiful. Anyway, bye-bye for now. I'll see you on the next video. And Ice Age. This one so precious because this was a gift from Nora Garden 89 from Facebook. I have to take you outside now so you can enjoy the great outdoors in spring. Spring is sprung. Look how pale this sunset peony look. But it doesn't matter. You're all going to be pretty again. This is for your Richie eye. Uh, that I've taken out. I'm going to put it somewhere here where it's actually protected from the sun because if I take that out and put it directly in the sun that's going to burn which is no good. So in here it's protected and it can slowly get the morning sun in the morning as well. So that's a good spot to keep that for now until it acclimated in about say three four weeks. I can take that out and put it directly under the sun. This cubic frost, variegated moon goodness, and also ice age. I have to find a spot here in my garden, ice age. I'm going to put in here, which can slowly get acclimated because I've got another, what is this one? This is actually something blue, or oh, big red, <laughs> variegated that I actually placed in here. I actually winged it and tried to see if it can survive the frost because my big red, the non-variegated one, actually survived our frost outside, outdoors. The only big red I've got is actually now I think about three or four heads. So that's the reason why I was game enough to take out that variegated one because I know it can handle the frost. Now Ice Age now can stay here as well for a while because I'm not too sure whether that's frost hardy or not. Cubic frost is mainly yellow and there's some green patches on the center of the leaves but the center is pink but this means that it needs to be acclimated slowly or else it's going to burn. So I'm going to be putting this one up the top here where I have a spot. You stay there. Okay. So you can grow there for, oh, well, I don't know, I can't see. Oops, there you go, it's center now, and my hands are shaking because I'm up high. Okay, so <laughs> now the other one, the last but not least. This is my Chaviria Mungadnes Crest, or Crested. That's non-variegated, and this is now the variegated one. This is the one that's away from the light. So you can see that the difference of the color but they are the same plant, except this one's variegated, of course, and the other one is non-variegated, but also crested. I don't really have much space in here. I can't find a spot to put them in, so that's the only available spot I've got there. So I'm just gonna rest this in here for a while. Oh, there you go. Moon Goodness has got the name there. <laughs>